Waterbox All-in-One Aquariums are an excellent choice for a freshwater planted aquarium. We are using the All-in-One 50.3 for a low-tech planted setup. Low-tech planted aquariums do not use CO2 and house easy to moderate care level plants. We are using the included media and sponges that come with the Waterbox AIO aquariums. The CJ Synchro Silent 2.0 is a return pump of choice for this model. To keep live aquarium plants, you'll need a high output light like the Aqua Illumination Freshwater Prime 16HD that we're using on this setup. Once the filtration pump and lighting are in place, the next step will be to add your substrate and hardscape. What order you add these items will depend a lot on how you plan to design the aquarium. For the rock, we are using Carib Sea Exotica Dragonstone. It needs to be rinsed well before use as dirt and silt accumulate in all the porous areas of the rock. Dragonstone has a scale-like appearance with many crevices and ridges, making it an incredibly beautiful and dramatic rock choice for a planted aquarium. I'm going to create two raised areas for driftwood in this aquascape. So first thing is to lay down some large rocks, which will support and lift the driftwood to desired height. The driftwood has been soaking for a few weeks. Remove tannins and water log it so it does not float. I highly suggest you do this before setting up your aquarium. To learn more about this process, check out the link above. Use smaller rocks to achieve the angle you want on the driftwood, and then I place a plastic cup to support the driftwood until rocks and gravel can hold it in position. For the substrate, I'm using Carib Sea Eco Planted Black Substrate. This is a smart choice for a planted aquarium since it contains essential nutrients and elements as well as beneficial bacteria to help cycle your aquarium faster. For information on how to choose the best substrate for your aquarium, check out the link above. With the first bag, I'm gonna build up the substrate around the driftwood to create the two higher areas on each side. Make sure to fill in all around the wood and rock for a stable foundation. I'm placing large pieces of dragonstone first to create the main border around the driftwood areas, keeping them facing in the same direction to create a uniform look of the ridges. Then using smaller pieces to fill in the gaps in between the large pieces. There will still be some small spaces between some of the rocks, and I'm using a polyfilter floss to plug these holes, which will keep the substrate from coming out of between the rocks. Now that all the rock is in place, time to add the rest of the eco planted substrate. Once again, making sure to fill in any empty spaces between wood and rock. Now it's time to add the plants. We'll be using an all easy to moderate plants that do not require CO2. A great plant to place on rock and driftwood is Anubias. In this setup, I'm using Anubias Nana and Anubias Golden Coin. Since the Anubias is potted, the basket and rooting material will need to be carefully removed so it can be attached to rock or wood surface. Take your time and be gentle not to cause damage to the roots. This is also a good time to trim off any leaves that are either damaged or dying. Using super glue gel, I attach the Anubias to the driftwood and rock surfaces. You'll need to hold it in place until it becomes secured and then by spraying water on that area, it will cause the glue to harden faster. I'm using Hygrophilia Compacta for a mid-ground plant around the Dragonstone with its nice contrast of bright green leaves and hints of pink as it grows in. For the background plant, Ludwigia repens is a colorful and easy choice. It is one of the few plant varieties with a nice red coloration you can keep in a low-tech aquarium and have it thrive. I'm using these to fill in in the raised area around the driftwood for height and color pop. For the foreground plant, I chose dwarf hair grass. Now this is not the easiest foreground plant you can choose. It does require good lighting and substrate, but with the use of prime freshwater light and eco planted substrate, it will do well in this setup. If looking for an easier foreground plant, I highly suggest dwarf sagittaria or dwarf chain swords. Dwarf hair grass does grow taller than what would be considered a low carpet, so it does require trimming to keep it a shorter height. Due to the very delicate and small leaves and roots of dwarf hair grass, take extra care removing the rooting material and separate it out into smaller sections to plant.
Evenly place the dwarf hair grass as over time this will grow to cover the whole foreground area like a carpet of grass. Java moss is used to cover driftwood and rock and can easily be pulled apart into smaller sections for placing. Using super glue gel, I'm adding the java moss to the long branches of the driftwood. Adding moss to the driftwood and rock adds depth and look of maturity to the aquarium. All the plants are in place, time to fill it with water. When filling your aquarium, you want to make sure the water is added gently so as not to disturb all the plants. Using a container for the water to pour into will help minimize disturbances. The aquarium is cycled with the use of a bacteria supplement and the live substrate so the fish can now be added. A school of harlequin rasboras will add movement and color. Autocats are great algae eaters that will not eat plants and stay small. Using airline tubing and hose clamps, the fish are drip acclimated before adding to the aquarium. After we added the school of rasboras, the tank is looking really nice. We did throw in some Amano shrimp for algae control. I'm really happy how this turned out.